All right, today we're gonna to be going through all of these test settings for this commercial electric MMM 8301S. The only one I can't, don't have a good demonstration for is these milliamps for DC current, but all the rest I'll be able to go ahead and show you. Go ahead and no take note of my port position for my test leads. We'll be in this position for all of these settings except for the 10 amp setting. Also take note, in this configuration, we're only rated for up to 200 milliamps of current. With the test lead in this port, you're rated up to 10 amps for a max of 30 seconds every 15 minutes. All of your technical specifications will be in your manual. We're not really gonna be covering that. We're just gonna be covering practical application of the test settings going through this wheel. Let's go ahead and start with first setting, 200 volts AC with possibility of electric shock. That's what that lightning bolt is trying to indicate to you. Let's go ahead and take a look. You're gonna wanna make sure to pay attention to series and parallel when doing your test. This test is in parallel with my circuit. It's unloaded. It can be loaded or unloaded when you're doing this. I'm coming back 121.5. Now the next setting is saying that it can test up to 600 volts. It's just not gonna have as good of resolution. You'll notice it'll drop that 0.5 and come back with one, two, two. So now it's rounding to the nearest whole number. So something to pay attention to. Next, we'll move on to the voltage DC settings. We can start here at 600. Again, the resolution isn't gonna be as good. Something we wanna take in consideration when we're measuring DC is our test lead polarity. What does that mean? That means our red and our black. That's gonna be more critical for DC. So we can see that I'm coming back with 12 volts DC. As we move through the reel, now I move it to 200, our resolution should get better. Now it says 12.0. So say I had 12 and a half, now it would be able to show that. On the other setting, it would just show, you know, 13. Now we're getting closer in our resolution. Now it's saying, okay, 12.01. So it's getting more and more accurate as we get closer to the actual voltage that we're trying to measure. Notice though, if I go to this two, that means that I'm trying to measure up to two volts of direct current. I'll measure the same circuit. Look at it, it shows an open and it doesn't show any voltage. So that's something that you're gonna need to pay attention to when you have a manual selecting range meter like you do here. And then 200 millivolt will also show the same reading of nothing. Something to pay attention to. I do really quickly want to show you really quick what does happen if you do have your lead switched on a DC circuit. You'll see a negative sign come up on that far left side. That's trying to tell you that your polarity is mixed up somewhere. So pay attention to that. Next up, we have these battery test settings. It can test a nine and a one and a half volt battery or a double A. What is it actually doing when we're testing a nine volt battery? Well, what it's actually doing here is it's load testing this battery. It's putting a certain amount of resistance through the meter to the battery, and that's our reading after it's load tested. So that's showing that that's a really strong battery. Next, we'll go to the one and a half volts. Same thing, gonna be load testing this cell. It's coming back at 1.52 after load testing. So that means that this is a good, strong battery. And then you can compare that, you know, to a chart online, what the results should be for load tests. All right, next up we have diodes. Diodes can be a little tricky. There can be a lot to it, but this again is gonna show us our voltage drop across the diode. And it's important that we understand that concept. With your run of a mill diode, something like this, I should have voltage drop in this configuration. It's showing me about half a volt of voltage drop with my power going from this way to that way. How can I tell which way I need to set my diode? This white stripe is indicating my flow is this way. Now, it's important that when we test a diode, we also test it in the other direction. Our meter should come back OL if this diode is good, and it does. Next, we're gonna move on to uh, resistance. And again, like our other settings, because this is a manual selecting meter, we have to be careful of what we select when we're trying to make a measurement, because if we make a measurement out of range, it's gonna show that it's open or not valid or however you wanna look at it. And that can really be confusing when we're trying to do our troubleshooting. So we're gonna go ahead and start at the 2M setting. 
on the meter all the way up here that's for two mega ohms or think of it as two million ohms and i'm gonna take a resistor polarity for testing resistance isn't gonna matter it's saying i have a 0 0.047 mega ohms of resistance in other words that would be 47 k ohms and think of k as thousands 47 thousand ohms so we can go ahead and get better clarity on our reading move to this 200k setting and now we can see 47.2k ohms and that's what it's trying to indicate again if we go to this 20k and this is at 47k that's out of the range for that setting so it's going to show and open which is going to be confusing if you're not sure the value of what you're testing so we can move down to a 10 ohm resistor Again, polarity doesn't matter. What does it say? It says 0.01K ohm. Now it says zero. We're still having a reading. It's not saying OL, it's saying zero. So let's refine our resolution of our reading. That's what we're doing here. Think of it like when we're getting to these smaller and smaller numbers, think of it like we're focusing the lens on a camera. We're out of focus still. If we go to 2K, okay, now we're showing 0.01K ohms. So that's 10 ohms of resistance. And we can go ahead to the 200 ohm setting. And now it shows just 10 ohms. We're also hearing this ringing sound. What is that for? You'll see on your meter, there's like a little speaker setting here. And that means that when there's continuity, continuity is just means there's some type of electric flow from one end of a wire to the next, basically. For continuity, that little ringing sound can be nice because if we're trying to look at wires and see if one's broken or if it's in the right spot or not, we don't have to look at our meter to know what's going on that ringing sound will just go ahead and tell us oh i have from one end of my wire to the next there's continuity and it just makes a tone so i don't have to look at it next would be this this is going to be amps dc up to 200 milliamps i don't have a load a dc load available to me at this time that that's that is that small to give you an example of how you would do that test say you had your load hooked up to measure amperage, we have to measure it in series with our circuits. Remember how there was a wire here? Well, we would take in place of this wire, we would use our multimeter, essentially the same thing as a jumper wire. We would use our test leads and we would measure it in series. And if this circuit was on, it should light up that light bulb and then we could get a measurement of the amperage. It'll make a little more sense for our next. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and use the last setting on our meter. It says 10 amps, it's for measuring DC current only. It will not read AC current and we're measuring amperage. Notice my lead position. You wanna be very careful when using your leads in this position because we've just turned our leads into a jumper wire essentially, right? We have a jumper wire with our live circuits and we're hooking things up and plugging things around. We could really screw something up. So I'm gonna measure in series to my DC circuit. Okay, and I'm showing two amps of current draw. There's all the test settings for your commercial electric multimeter. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll go through and clarify. I'll continue making videos to help with series and parallel and lead polarity and all that stuff. But go check out my channel. I got plenty on there that's related to this and a lot of other stuff. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.